so after you, you know, train, he, you know, you got you got your own truck, you get onto the account. Yeah. But what happened though? Okay, everything went well. I did very well. Now, I need you to understand when I did my application process, and you know, the recruiter reaches out to you. I was very honest because this is the trucking industry, so you can't really be hiding stuff that you did or anything like that because they're gonna find out anyway. And I didn't want to be red flagged. So, well, maybe I'll, I would say nine years ago, I caught a felony case right. that I pleaded guilty for. Ain't no shame in my game. It is what it is. We talked about that in, uh, in, in the, uh, in the podcast. Yes. Too. In the first, in the, yeah. And believe it or not, because of the felony, they had to let me go. Wow. Even after Mind they brought you, you on. Even I, I completed their training. They did all of their screening, all of that stuff. I trained. I completed everything. Got their certificate. Got, you know, everything. Down pack on my account. All of that. Got a truck. Everything. They gave me a 2021 Cascadia. I was chilling. You know, I was doing the damn thing while pregnant. <laughs> and then, bomb. They gave me a phone call to let me know that the situation came up, which I already discussed with them. All right, so hold on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's pu let's push it back for a little bit. Let's let's go back to the discussion to the uh, with the um, recruiter. Recruiter, you you did let the recruiter know, like you know, hey, you know, I, I this is my felon. This is how long it's been. And the That's recruiter, it. the recruiter was like, what? Yeah, good, no problem. What? She, her behavior was no problem. It was no, and then she kept everything going. She kept everything going. So here I am thinking, I got the green light. I'm good. Because in the trucking industry, it's many felons in the, you know what I'm saying, in the industry. It is what it is. You know, nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. And like I said, that's part of my past. That's, that has nothing to do with who I am right now, nor today. So she proceeded with everything. I completed all, I did everything I needed to do. And then, bomb, that's when they hit me with that situation. To where I had to, you know, I had to send them back their their equipment and everything like that. How, how was how, how was the conversation? How how did it how how did it come to you uh, from well, start um, from from Haitian from start to finish from you know like if you was working or whatever the case or if you was at home or anything like that from start. No, I was at I was at home. So from, I was at home. So from start to finish, how how did you you know you got the call, the conversation of the call, and how you felt after the call? Well, when I got the call, you know, he, um, the guy Mike, he just was like, you know, Kim, which is my name. He was like, Kim, we got a um email from the recruiter about uh you know a felony charge that you got you know that's it's, it's kind of old he was like everything was all mind you he's not calling from where i'm coming out of massachusetts that's where the account is coming out. he's calling me from the terminal which is in carlisle pennsylvania mm -hmm. you understand what i'm saying so he's letting me know that you know what i'm saying that i no longer could work with snyder because of the felony he he just said. So just I'm like, like I'm not an argumentative person, mm -hmm. so I just left it as is. There's plenty of trucking jobs out there, so I'm like, you know, hey, okay, no problem. And I just left it like that. I, you know, what I'm saying I sent in whatever stuff that belonged to the company, you know, like the ELD and stuff like that. I um, went to the post office and I mailed it back to them, and that's it's been a. It wasn't even that long ago. It was only a few weeks ago. It was the beginning of this month. Wow. So they Friday'd you, huh? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Wow. That's that's crazy. And I accepted that and then I went into um I didn't feel down about it. It was just a little hurtful because it was something that I enjoyed so much. But then it was like, wait a minute, there's a like I mentioned just now, it's other trucking companies out here that don't have a problem hiring a felon. You know, they say that now, and I'm I'm beginning to see uh, some some blowback on that. A lot of companies say that they don't have a problem with felons. They'll say that it's on a case by case basis, 
Even Snyder, when I when I did to make the call, they said it was on a case by case basis. Yada 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 yada. Here you are. Let them know of a past, from the beginning from the beginning of a past felony, yeah. which which already yeah. succeeded years ago, to come back. Yeah. You know, to come back years later as as an issue of you driving the truck. Yes. And to even top it off, I want you to understand, just to show you that I don't have an issue with my felony, with my felony charge. I even uploaded the documents of my charges. I emailed it to them. They had all of that. I don't hide nothing. I ain't kill nobody. So I'm not hiding anything. I didn't have a crazy drug car. I, I didn't hide anything. So, but what it did to me was it pushed me to handle my own business. So what did I do after that? So I went and I got my own LLC up and running. I got my own damn EIN number. I monitor and watch what I need to do. I, I have money where if I really want to, I could go get a truck right now. See, that's I could what's go up. get one right now. That's what's because up. Because you know Leveling what? Sometimes let's see her you up. have to Hardship get your push own. You. Yep. Hard, that's it. Hardships push you to the push you to I the point. I don't take no for an answer. You know, if one door closed, I'm going through. I'm jumping through a window. It's, it's other ways out. It's other ways out. And not only that, I reached out to other truckers. Like you got um, Pam Mueller. I reached out to her and side Bart talked to her. Um, I reached out to. Um, there's another lady that has a fleet of trucks. Her name is um, Kiera with Truck and Guru. I reached out to her. I reached out to a gentleman. He's a felon. As a matter of fact, all he do is hire felons. He's down in Texas. Um, Brewster. I reached out to them. And they get back to me with all of this advice. And I'm like, yo, you know what? They doing their own shit. Why I can't do mine? Why not? So that's that's where I'm at right now. Because like I said, this just happened in the beginning of this month. We're in December. So well, I'm going to just do my own thing. Well, Haitian Kim, shout out to you for uh, for that. Thank you. you. Know, getting, you know, getting getting the juice to 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 rock out and to make your own thing And don't happen. give up. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't give up. Just because somebody tell you no, there's too much other opportunities and other avenues you could take. Now let me You ask, don't have to just go by that. Now let me ask you this. Are you now are are you gonna be laser focused on getting your own thing up and running? Or are you willing to give uh another company that will accept you uh a chance? Well, after I have this baby and she gets a little she grow a little bit to where I could trust somebody to stay with her, I will give a you know, I will reach out to another trucking company because I'm going to need a little bit more coins. You know what I mean? This is handling what I'm doing. All right. Well, I tell you what, uh, you know, after, you know, after your baby, probably what, what, what are we talking about? What, what timeline are we talking about? Six months? I would say months? about five months. Five yeah, months? Yeah, about five months where All I right. could trust, you know what I'm saying, somebody with her, yes. All right, so I tell you what, in five months, reach back out to me. I got, now, if you don't mind, I know you're up in Connecticut. Yeah, you can have that part of the world. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I know that you're up in Connecticut, but I know two or no, I know three companies right off the rip. I, I think one of which I got to make sure the one because I don't think the one does training because you're going to need you, you're going to need some training. But I know two, for example, uh, they up here in Ohio, they good Ohio based companies. They they start their they start their drivers off uh, close to 50 cent a mile. And all like that. So if you don't mind coming down here to Ohio and checking out what they got, I can uh, just get back in contact with me in a couple of you know, No, I don't months. mind it at all. All right, no doubt. I don't mind it at all. Yeah, get back in contact with me, and I'll probably be you able know, to come up with a different master plan. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be. And not able only to that, I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you reached out to me because it also, you know, gives someone else a chance to understand like. Don't let nothing make you feel no way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
Because, you know, people, so, another person probably would have handled it like how I'm handling it. They probably want to cook it like that. You know, we in some crazy times right now. People get depressed, committing suicide, all this stuff. I didn't let none of that negative energy, none of that negative vibe, none of that negative, you know, news and information change my decision on what I want to do. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Understood clearly. So, you know, when you, re- you know, when you reach out to me and we now having this conversation, if I have the willpower to keep it moving, somebody else need to hear my story to motivate them to keep it moving. Like, yo, don't give up. You got to keep pushing, keep pushing through. You know, that's- and I don't let nothing stop me. And, you know, that's what the Lockout Man podcast show is about. The best conversations starts over here. You know what I'm saying? We come in and we talk, we conversate, we chill, we sit back yeah. and relax. That's what's up. And keep it real. Keep it Be real honest. and moving. Hey, hey Shin, before we get on up out of here, and I really do appreciate you taking the time talking to me right quick. Now that you, you know, you went to school and you see, and you got with a trucking company and you see a little bit of, uh, of what's going on out here, what do you wish the school would have taught you that you had to learn on your own? Who, um, what the school, well, I don't know, because I already have, I have common sense already. <laughs> so I don't know common sense about a lot of things. But my main thing that I enjoyed that I learned at Snyder was about how, you know what I'm saying, everything was really about safety. Everything. No matter what it was, it still circled right back around to safety. It circled right back around to safety. You know, as far as, like, your equipment, as far as, like, when you're on the road driving, you know, scanning wide and far. You know what I mean? you driving, but, yeah, you you driving for them, them four-wheelers next to you, four-wheelers in front of you. You got to really be paying attention and be on your P's and Q's, scanning those mirrors. It was all about safety, and that's what I enjoyed the most. Because, you know, you have some drivers, they get their CDL and they think them trucks is cars. They're not. Look at the situation that happened with that gentleman with the, the brakes that went. It's, it's all about safety. You know, some people blamed him. The, the situation that happened out in Colorado, some people blamed him. Some people blamed the company. You know what it is? It's all about safety. And they're trying to give him 110 years behind that. So it's all about safety with those um trucks. You know And that like I said, the only thing I rock with out of Snyder is how they drill safety on your ass. Now now that you mentioned uh safety, um uh, before you get on up out of here, you know, a young lady, TikToker, uh she made uh she made a video which uh which which going viral my humble opinion is that I think she did it for a TikTok validation. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> but, um, but, um, she happened to notice uh, the young man, you know, getting some beer. Noticed that his truck was next to, next to her in the fuel island. She took it upon herself to, uh, to call the company, and, uh, you know, tell him, tell the company what he was doing. In which, which in turn got, got the young man terminated. Uh, a lot of a lot of feelings on this topic. <laughs> I, I I got maybe one. I got maybe two, maybe three questions for you. The first the first question is, uh, the first question is, would you would have done it? <laughs> that, I like how you threw me on the spot. And number one, I didn't see it. I didn't see it, but I'm glad you we're, t- we're going to talk about that real quick. What I, I see, I'm the type of person I like to mind my damn business. I, I mind my business. I don't like to be in nobody mix. And I mentioned it before when I say I respect people. But that right there is a sticky situation. What I would, me, what I would have did the same shit. You know what? I'm going to keep it a buck. Yeah, I would have did the same shit. Because you know why? You playing with people's life. You playing with people's life. Why would you, you know, you're a truck driver. That's what I'm saying. You got a lot of these truckers, they doing too much. They getting high. 
or whatever drug they can get their hands on, and then they get in drunk. Like I keep saying, those these trucks are not cars. And even if they was cars, you know what I'm saying? You can't, that's 80,000 pounds you fucking around with. 80,000. So I don't blame her. Okay. I don't, if that's how she felt, I don't blame her. Now, the second question is. I do is, not blame her. Now, now, the second question is, after you said that you would do it, would you would have would would you would have post post yourself uh posted on social media no i would have kept that discreet and anonymous because i you just you heard me mention in the beginning of the interview i have all of these kids my oldest is 25. my oldest daughter is 25. he out there getting drunk playing around it's a big old accident my daughter's in the mix of that how, how you think i'm gonna feel how, how am i gonna feel you know, but these trucking companies, they get sued all the time because of, you know, the negligence of these drivers. They too comfortable. So you can't blame all of these rules and regulations that's coming into play. Somebody had to fuck up somewhere to why they making these changes. Right, that's so how you, I feel. So you say you wouldn't do you 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 wouldn't uh If I did that, I wouldn't have been bold and been posting he got a family. I don't need nobody putting their head out on me. No, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Or better yet, she could have even took it to the next level. Why she ain't approach him and have a conversation with him? Maybe that beer wasn't even his. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it was a type of beer, whatever state is happening. You know what I'm saying? You know how when you, like how you're from Ohio and I, I live in Connecticut, it's going to be products that's in Ohio they don't have in Connecticut. You understand what I'm saying? So who's to say I'm not going through or you coming through here and you see the products and be like, yo, let me snatch this because I don't see it where I live at. Who's, that's what I'm saying. Who's to say that the bill was for him? All right. It could have been a purchase made for somebody else. Right. Like, okay, I like, um, what they have a soda out in Kentucky that I like to drink. It's called Big Red. They don't have that in Connecticut. Mm. If I want some Big Red, I got to order that shit from Amazon. Mm. Or I got to tell one of my homegirls that live in Kentucky, yo, send me a, you know, a six pack of some Big Red. Mm. She make that purchase. If she's not making a purchase for her, she's making a purchase and mailing it to me. That's what I'm saying. She could have took it upon herself to be like, yo, if she's that bold to make a TikTok video, then she should have been bold enough to approach him and have a conversation with him. Because like I said, who's to say that the, the item that he purchased was even for him? That's what's up. That's what's up. And that's the opinions of Haitian. Yeah, it is. That's it is. What's up. But nah, she wrong for that. That's what's up. She's man. wrong for, um, you know, she could, yeah, she called his job. Yes, he got terminated. But to get, by, see, social media, that's how people get hurt. People do too much. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. If you a trucker, you know, most of us have an arrogant behavior about us. We real cocky. One trucker looking out for the next. Why you just ain't approach him and just, yo, let me holler at you real quick. You know, because it's like a brotherhood when you in trucking. You should be able to talk to your fellow truckers and see what's up. Ain't no more, she she ain't, didn't know who that purchase was for. Ain't, ain't no more brotherhood out here. We got way too many trucker cameras. Everybody for stuff. So, Everybody hey, it is what it self. is. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. But ain't nothing wrong. But, you, but you're asking me my opinion and how I feel about it. That's how I would have went about it. Obviously, you said she was a younger person. I'm in my 40s. So, we look at stuff totally different. Well, I don't know if she's young or not. I, I think she's probably might be up in her forties. In one of her videos, she did mention the fact that she says she's been with her particular company for ten years. So I'm I'm going to assume that you know she's up in age. And if that's the case, please, they, them chicks be young as hell and be looking old as fuck nowadays. So you don't even know no more. <laughs> you don't even know no more. Cause I don't even look my age. Hey, it is what it is. That's what's up. All right, well, Haitian Kim, I mean, Haitian, yes, Haitian I enjoyed Kim, this Kim, interview. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you for having no problem, no problem. 
Uh, as always, like I said, you are a citizen, and we will definitely come back, uh, come back again. And uh, keep in touch. Keep I'm in around. Touch. I'm available. All right, you take. You it have easy. a blessed and safe holiday. Yes. All right, I'm out. All right, bye.